This is my final review of the OnePlus 7 Pro. I finally decided after about a year and a half that I am going to sell this phone. Before I really get started with the main review of this video, I do want to say I've had the OnePlus 7 Pro since 2020. I got it in February of 2020, basically right before COVID, and I used it as a main phone from basically February 2020 all the way up basically until late 2021. Now, this phone is not the original phone. I got this back in January of about 2023, and I basically use it as a side phone, not something that I would actually use as a main phone, just more as a secondary phone, and I gotta say, it's a great secondary phone. I'm deciding to sell this because I don't really have too much of a use for it. I love having a secondary phone, but honestly, having one phone is totally fine. And also, I just want to um, sell this so I can have some money um, when I'm back in college. Anyways, let's get started with this review. We've got a glass back, aluminum sides, and a glass front. We have USB-C on the bottom as well as our speaker grill. We have two speaker grills. One of them is at the top that also is an earpiece speaker. One really special feature of this design is the pop-up camera. This is a really cool mechanism and we can see it right here. It opens up very quickly. It's not like any kind of cheap pop-up camera. It can open and close and it will have no problems. And um, also, let's drop it from a small height. Let's see what happens. It immediately closes before it hits the ground. It will basically say free fall detected. The front camera has been lowered. Would you like to use the front camera again? You press raise the camera or you say close. There you go. The design on this is really great. It feels amazing in the hands, even without a case. And even though it is a bit slippery, I overall really like the design. So let's move on to that display. You can see right here, we do not have a hole punch camera. And that is because of that pop-up camera, which makes for a completely bezel-less display. It honestly looks great. It's 1440p, it's 90 hertz, and it's AMOLED. With those kind of specs, you really can't go wrong. If I could say one minor complaint about this uh, display is that maybe it doesn't get the absolute brightest. You're not gonna get like 1400 nits or something like that. What you will get is a pretty respectable six to 700 nits. Put it out in the sun here. And as you can see, it's still totally viewable. Just not as viewable as something like the newest iPhone or the newest Android phones. The 90 Hertz also feels great when you're going throughout the UI or playing games that support 90 Hertz. Overall, the display, if I had to give it a grade, it's an A plus because there's really nothing wrong. Uh, one uh, thing also um, that I personally like, but a lot of people don't like, is that it's a curved display. Um, I really like this and it makes it for more of a bezel-less experience, but some people don't like that. So that is something to keep in mind. But for me, it's one of the best displays I've ever seen. And actually, if you ask me, whether I would pick something like the OnePlus 7 Pro or the OnePlus 9 Pro to use as a daily phone, I would easily pick the 7 Pro or even compared to the 10 Pro or the 11. Honestly, this I much prefer just because of this display. So how's the performance and also the software? Well, we're running Android 11, which you might be like, okay, that's pretty old and I don't like the fact that it is, you know, only Android 11. But honestly, with Oxygen OS, it makes it feel way more modern. Looking throughout the UI, it actually has the newer Android look. It's very, very new and it's very clean and I love the design of it. Let's talk about this performance. Performance is great. I have no issues with their performance. Yes, it's a Snapdragon 855, but it doesn't feel like it. It feels like a much newer phone, way newer than it should be, because honestly, everything here is fluid. If you open up any apps, it will take no time at all. If you open up the weather app, let's just see, it takes no time. Settings, no time. Camera even, no time. It just takes no time. There's no like lag or anything like that, like you see on some budget phones, like something on like a Snapdragon 7 series or something like that. This is great. Where you will see a performance drop maybe is in some, some uh, um, highly intensive games, um, such as like Genshin Impact, but honestly, even then, it will still fly through um, at somewhat of a lower FPS, but it will still run pretty smoothly. Overall, no complaints with the software or the performance. 
let's talk about this camera. We got a 48 megapixel main camera, a 16 megapixel ultra wide, and a 3x telephoto camera that's 8 megapixels. For the pop up camera, we also got a 6, 16 megapixel front facing camera. So, what do I think of the cameras? They actually perform way better than you'd expect. Um, it looks great um, for something that you need to basically have your mindset on something that is similar to the equivalent of like a three to four hundred dollar phone even though this isn't three to four hundred dollars by the way and i'll talk about that later but this is the equivalent of something that is good for a three to four hundred dollar phone and honestly that's great it has a good amount of detail um and i really don't have a problem with the main camera also the telephoto the telephoto is great you can zoom in even to five times or seven times and it'll still keep its detail the ultra wide camera can sometimes lack in detail, but it does have autofocus and does look really good, even though there isn't the most amount of detail. The front facing camera is um, pretty good, actually. There's, like the main camera, is there's a lot of vividness in um, the camera, and also that the detail is definitely okay. It's basically just as good as something like the ultra wide or telephoto camera, and honestly, that's not a bad thing. Overall, I don't have a complaint really with the uh, cameras. All right, so finally, let's talk about this pricing. So the OnePlus 7 Pro, I actually sold this phone. Now, this does have a little bit of a crack, but I sold it for about 50 bucks. And honestly, that's basically how much it's worth. You can find it for easily 50, 60 bucks um, for ones without a crack. Um, and this, by the way, this is a minor crack. I mean, it's really not noticeable. And you've seen in the video, like you can not even see it. Um, and, uh, but without a crack, I will say it is a bit more pricey. It's about hundred to $110, but for what you're getting, you're getting a telephoto camera, something that even $700 phones don't have something. Even my main phone doesn't have actually, um, and something that I wish it would have. Um, it also has 90 Hertz display, which is more common, but what isn't common is a 1440p 90 Hertz display. That is something that is very uncommon and uh, something that is much appreciated for something that's only about 100 to 110 bucks. It's also quite a unique phone. I mean, there's not too many phones now with a pop-up camera, and I wish there were. There's some phones with an underscreen camera, but then the problem is, is that you don't have a quality camera. With this, the pop-up camera is great. Um, you get quality photos, and I haven't had a problem with it. Some other features that you don't even see on the top phones is a curved display anymore. I personally love the curved display, and I feel like a lot of people would. I don't understand why they don't, um, because honestly, I don't have a single complaint with this display. So overall, this is definitely 100% worth it. If I had to recommend one Android phone to anyone who's looking for a phone under even $300, I'd recommend this one because this is basically perfect. There's nothing wrong with this. It's a fantastic phone that has good cameras, especially for its price, as well as great performance and software. And um, yes, I know it isn't on like the latest Android, but it is feeling really modern and honestly doesn't feel like it's outdated or anything like that. It's a fantastic phone even five years later. Anyways, that's about it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, let me know um, if you did. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.